Namaste. Welcome. For today, we will take a closer look at the Tencha Mayurasana or the forearm stand. So, we will learn this element from the foundation, which means the physical alignment as well as the breath pattern, and how we combine these beautiful elements so we can keep ourselves supported, light, and open. Yeah? And then easy, breathing comfortably as you enter, hold, and exit the position. As well as I will be giving some energetic insights about um, the significance of this beautiful asana so that we can further investigate and feel the expression of the energetic locks or the organic core support we all have inside our body so they move and work collectively to keep the stillness as we hold the position. Right. Of course, the breath is very important here. All right, for me, this is more than an arm balance. Yes, technically, structurally, it's an arm balance, but when you are holding it, it's really meditative that you can feel uh, imbalances in the body, not just left and right, but also um, the, the bandhas. Because in here, there are many ways of doing this, but for me, um, the most meaningful is when the spine remains yeah, nice and low, upright, like the bandhas are stacked over each other. Yeah? One long vertical line, and there you can feel, oh, um, you don't want to be overdoing one element, otherwise you might um, or overdo the position and you might fall over if your bandas are not fully engaged, especially um, the, this one, the, the, the Odina Banda, there is a huge chance of you pouring or putting the pressure into the shoulders. If um, you're using too much of the momentum, the flexibility, you know, it doesn't really serve the purpose of developing the core. So let's go straight to the topic. So let's make this tutorial productive. Alright, so the four arms. Um, yeah, definitely this will require flexibility of the shoulders. So if it's not happening, for example, you, know, you are doing this, and as you walk your feet forward like that, you know, the elbows start to slide out to the side, that you feel the pressure gets here, means you're not ready. You know? um, work progressively to develop the flexibility of the shoulders, because, yes, you can do it actually, if you kick, but um, this is not about kicking, it's still pressing up. Although we're lifting one leg at a time, yeah, you don't kick it, rather you're gonna push from the foundation. And if the shoulder flexibility is not present, and you force it, you might end up putting the pressure in, it's not good. So still work progressively. Stop, it means you're not ready, back off, and then work to um, build, not just flexibility, but also strength, especially of the respiratory system, because the breath would have to be light as you do the position. All right, so the four arms, uh, um, many many structural components how you, you uh, position the arms but for me um, as long as you feel stable in the elbows yeah, as long as you feel stable in the shoulders some people they tend to open the elbows a little bit wider some elbow, um, the elbows um, show the distance you know, it really doesn't matter because the elbows there this one yeah as long as you feel stable here it's really more right here so as I mentioned earlier, if you try to, for example, um, go forward like that, and then you feel this, the part of the shoulder tends to feel heavy, and then the breath cannot flow, you're not ready back on. All right, no. that's the, um, I would say, it's, it's the foundation, but it's the secondary. The more important, actually, is the hips, all right? So the hips would have to be open as well. All right, fifth, for example, right. um, you're gonna do this. And then, for some reason, you cannot connect your thigh, the, the tops of the hips there to your low back. For example, if you walk and then you can just inch like this, and then you need to bend your knees to walk. Yeah, not ready to. All right, because um, the main component here so that you uh, will not kick the position is to keep the low back, the hips, and the rest of the lower limbs and how uh, together as one unit. They have to hug together. All right. For example, if you're lacking the flexibility of the hips and it's not happening, work to develop the hips definitely. Um, uh, postures which promote the flexibility of the knees, the hips, and the dynamism of the hips will be very, very helpful. Jumping through, jumping back, some standing there, some binding twist, and positions such as this, Adhamajirasana, Varadvijasana, or even the Pamasana. And I would recommend, but for me, the best ones are this, yeah, the yeah, Ayurveda and Rasana, and then this one, the Kurmasana. Because this one really promotes yeah, both the flexibility and the strength of the upper back, 
and of course the abs. Lift your hips off the ground and then lift the rest of your body off the ground. So I posted quite um, a, few, a few tutorials about this element, so you may want to take a look at them so you can do this lesson individually. All right, now the breath is next. All right, so the breath, I've talked about this before as well, that the breath is rising, it's elongating. So in the Pincho Mayo Rasana, all right, uh, as you take that inhalation, you can apply press downwards, you're going to push away from the foundation, but the buoyancy actually goes to the tops of the hips, not only that, also um, right here. Yeah, so it's like now, as you breathe, the breath elongates to a, a vertical extension. Right, as you push down, definitely, you know, you're going to create length here, so you're going to send some buoyancy here. Inhale, and at the same time, you're going to lift your back up. Now where, particularly? right here, the back pockets of the hips. There's the energetic significance I'm talking about. So you're gonna feel now the lightness of the breath go, yeah, if you're structurally more open in the back, you're gonna feel it right here at the back of your shoulders. If you're more structurally open in the front, you're gonna feel it right here at the collarbone. I've talked about this before, so really depending on your structure. But the main focus here, the main point, concept is that when you inhale, to, to create more space here, you're gonna send the breath really higher up the chest, yeah? And then, not only that, you'll also be sending the buoyancy or the lightness down the back pockets of the hips here. Because the breath will actually elevate the hips. So you won't kick the position, rather you are pressing up. Alright, so as you inhale, you push away. You're going to send the lightness here. You're going to send the lightness high. Like you're being pulled apart. Alright, and then, yeah, you are pressing and you are, yeah, holding the position nice and still. And even if you're holding the position, that will be the breath. Inhale. Good. And as you exhale, you don't want to dump it. When you exhale, make the exhalation light. So engage lightly the Odila Banda. And as you're holding the position, actually you can feel the root of the mouth and the throat, the hollow of the ribs here, and the center of the pelvis, they are stacked over or along plane, like they are stacked on top of each other. All right, so let's do that position. Let me just um, get my shirt up so you can see the action in the form as well. Right. Right. Four arms. Right. So you don't want to be muscling the hands too much because if you press too much, you are spending too much energy. So easy, nice and light and calm. Yeah? That's the floor. All right, create the initial space. You might you know, lengthen this side trunk there. First, you might want to do a bit of like a child's pose and then inhale tops of the throat forward and exhale all right place the forearms to the ground all right now go the toes under as you inhale you're gonna push away the forearms push down and forward as the hips will rise up and down yeah so that's inhalation like you are creating that traction already yeah. let's start from the top yeah exhale the child's pose inhale forward all right this one has to open a bit yeah because the length would have to be distributed Throughout the length of your spine. Yeah. Inhale, push away. See the hips? Yeah. Inhale. Alright. At the top of that inhalation, adjust your feet forward. Alright. Breathing in, repeat the process. Inch forward. Yeah. For example, yeah, here the hips, the lower back. They are hugging together already. You are ready to enter the position. Alright. Breathing in. Alright, now you don't want to be kicking. Just to balance now. It's press in. Alright, you're gonna send and feel the breath right up here. Yeah, and that will create that energetic lift. Now, with that, at the same time, you're gonna feel the breath open the spot or open the back. As long as you're feeling this light, yeah, that's a good way to approach the position. Alright, let's do that. Good. Pull light, inhale, and exhale. Alright, inhalation. Yeah. Inhale up to the vertical. Push away. In. Yes. And then you're lifting the legs after. All right. Inhale. Press down. As you inhale, you're going to push away. But at the same time, lift the breath up to the hips. All right. So your spine yeah, looks like you are just standing. All right. In here. Yeah. The throat. Holding. The stability and lightness of the upper back, the core, the space between the two big ribs, the hollow space, 
support the trunk so you don't feel heavy in the shoulders, you can breathe. And then the pelvis, nice and light, to hold the position still. All right, now the release. It's inhalation. Let's do the release one leg, yeah? Inhale, push away. You're gonna release that leg down, inhale, inhale. And lightly, or lightly, lightly. Toes to the ground, and exhale. All right, you can actually release both sides all at once. All right, so the release is an inhalation. Inhale, as you inhale, you start to close the hips and you release one leg or you can release both sides at once. All right, let's try that again. Let me angle the other side. All right, make sure the shoulders are open, nice and light. All right, uh, you will know that you've um, got far enough the, the moment you feel the pressure start to build up in the shoulders. And this is really very interesting because the pinch of my arasana, um, although you're holding the spine nice and still at the top, you will feel that one shoulder, one side of you is more um, efficient lighter and stronger holding the position. For me, it's my left side is more open, it's, it's light, but the right side, when I'm hanging already for quite a few breaths, starts to go heavy. Yeah, so, uh, it means that I need to release the position already. Otherwise, if I hold it more than that uh, amount of time, I feel this one, this one tends to become short. So I have to do the other side as well, just to balance the flow of the energy. Yeah? All right, so I will use this leg now to elevate my body up. Yeah? And then I will try to release the position of the ones. Yeah? Even the entry later on, if you become very efficient with it, you can actually enter the position with both hips of the ones. All right? um, I will try that as well. Yeah? If I feel the readiness. Now, sometimes the body is heavy, you force it. All right, from here, exhale, inhale, then you might flip the arms, huh? but inhale, push down and away, hips rise up and back. Yeah, when you enter the neck, yeah, lightly open forward, yeah? just to keep the space of the shoulders open. Inhale, inhale, and exhale. Now, I will use this leg now so I can balance the energy. Yeah, breathing in, exhale, inhale, push, you're pressing. All right in here, the thigh bones turn inward. Yeah, next sound. Nice and lifted structure. Breathing in, push. You want to open through the shoulders by lifting the hips higher, but don't overshoot the hips. You're lifting up to the vertical. Nice and light breath. You might slide the chest back a bit. So you form a little bit of that hollow back, but side. It feels the spine remain nice and neutral, but they stack over each other. All right, I will re be releasing both heads at once. Inhale, tucking the tail, and lightly land your feet down the ground. All right, you can actually release that when you become very efficient with the technique. Yeah, now, there, if you do one side, um, you balance the energy by using the other leg, to create the buoyancy. Yeah, yeah, it's just balanced already. Now, when those technique or methods become more lighter in the future, you become efficient with that, you can actually try lifting both hips at once. Um, this is really very difficult because it will really require uh, quite a core strength and you might want to learn lifting both hips at once with the legs a little bit wider apart. All right, so I can, um, sometimes I can do with my feet close and really depending on how I feel for a particular day but for today let me try with my feet a little bit wider than the abs. Right. Like you're doing this. Alright. And then this as wide as your mat was a little bit wider than the abs. Alright. Four arms. Forward the throat, inhale. Exhale. Alright. Gonna open a bit wider. Alright. As I inch forward, inhale, push away. And here I need to send the buoyancy to the backs of my body. Yeah? So I can lift, push away. There we go. Inhalation. And we go back to that nice and upright position. Yeah. Keep the breath light. 
Press the stable. Investigate. Push. Uh, release. Water both legs. Inhale. As you inhale, keep sending the buoyancy to the hips. Then landing down the rest. Yeah. Yeah. Try and investigate. Yeah? But still, definitely work progressively. You don't kick. All right? I don't really uh, suggest you learning this from the kicking perspective because you know what? When you are holding it upright, the sensation is totally different. Yeah, you need to learn it from the perspective of pressing. Yeah, pressing using the breath, using the core locks, using, of course, the structure, flexibility, and strength. So it's an advanced position, looks fancy outside, but more than that, there's some energetic significance you can feel inside the body, Band is working collectively, mind work, all right, and definitely stillness, calm, and the breath. Yeah. So many preparatory elements: shoulder flexibility, hip flexibility, definitely respiratory yeah, strength as well needed for this element to happen lightly, safely, and progressively. So keep the practice going. Yeah, it might take a long time, but definitely worth the wait. Namaste.